Hello and welcome to the program. And you know what the, the, the person I have on the program today is a wonderful woman of God. And before I introduce her to you, I want to encourage you to get on the telephone and tell somebody that a heavy program is about to take off on this channel. She's a person you're going to see more of on this channel. And she is by the name Pastor Susan Pillens of a ministry known as Suzanne's Ministries and also called Step Out in Faith. Welcome to the program, Woman of God. Thank you. It's good to see you. And when I saw, I haven't seen you for over six, seven years now. And the first time I saw you this time around, I thought you haven't changed. But on the other hand, I thought you looked a lot younger than before. <laughs> so what do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> what do you eat? What food do you eat to keep you looking younger? Just healthy food. Healthy food, amen. <laughs> God bless you, madam. And uh, today, I just want us to spend some time on talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. We know that there are nine gifts of the Spirit. Yes. So also, there are nine fruits of the Spirit. Yes. But I'd like you to tell, tell us, what is the difference between the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is God's character forming in us. And they gifts of the Holy Spirit is a free gift of the nine gifts when we receive and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But it's very important that we do walk in all the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. But there are a lot of times you see some so-called men of God, they walk with gifts of the Spirit, but then you search their lives I can't, you, it's difficult to find a lot of the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. What do you think could be responsible for that? Oh, they have to answer before God. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are just as important as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. A person, when you meet a person, there's always an aura around that person. As you approach a person, you will sense if they're a Christian. You will sense if they're kind. You can sense if you can trust them. A bad person, you will sense the hardness. You'll be a bit afraid of them. Uh, you'll pull back from them. Oh, you've got to be your... When you come to God, you are coming out of the world. And it takes time to form the character of the gifts, the fruits of the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit, sorry, the fruits of the Spirit in us. It takes time. We've got to grow in the fruits. We have to really come to know the Lord. When you approach the Lord, you cannot see his face at all because he's in the spirit realm. But you can sense his countenance. You can sense his love. You can sense his joy. You can sense his peace. I've just come back from the Feast of Tabernacles. Everywhere there are people rejoicing. Jews, Christians, everyone is rejoicing. And the Lord really spoke to me. He said, I want to bring you to another level of living out of my love. I want you to rejoice in me more. Because only as you rejoice in me more can my countenance of love, joy, and peace radiate through your life. Ah. And sometimes we're so serious yeah. in serving God that we miss that joy. And the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Strength, yes. Wonderful. And so he challenged me there. And yeah. I'm coming back to now just relax and... Resting in the Lord. Yes. Amen. And you came, you brought me here yesterday. And you said, I want you just to relax in this lovely place. Relax? I haven't done that in a long time. Relax, yes. When you're relaxed, you can hear God easy. Hallelujah. 
Wonderful. His love, his joy, his peace. The first three fruits of the Holy Spirit, they're beautiful, all of that. Wonderful. Like I said at the beginning of the program, there are nine fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Can you please share, break it down for us, please? Yes, well, uh, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's true. Interesting. That is correct. Yes. If you walk in those fruits, yes. there's no law. You're Absolutely free from the no law. Absolutely no law. You're free. Totally free in Christ. Because a lot of Christians are struggling. Yes. Because they are not functioning in the fruit. So as a result, they, are, they keep stumbling. Yes. But like the Word of God says, against those, there is no law. Yes. Wow. So how do we obtain the first three fruits? We're talking about love, joy, and peace into our lives. Well, prayer is waiting on God to receive his love, joy, and peace. We can only receive it through prayer. The Lord's Prayer says, Our Father. Not my Lord or our God, but my Father, your Father, our Father, who lives, not somewhere on earth, but in heaven. In the spirit realm, we can come right into the presence of God. Hallowed be thy name. You can converse with God in heaven. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How? Through our lives. For only believers can come up to access heaven to receive the love of God, the peace of God, the joy of God, or the fruits of the Spirit, as well as the healing power of God the miracle working power of God and give it out to those around us on earth. We should all be living it because only believers can access God in prayer and bring heaven down on earth. We have too many people accessing the kingdom of darkness and bringing up all the curses of hell and throwing those out on this earth while the Christians are sitting not doing enough. Wonderful. So what is the result? What kind of result should one expect walking in these fruits? Well, basically, the Holy Spirit will change us from the inside so that we can live it outwardly. And we then become more and more full of the Holy Spirit and we need to practice this. And the result is in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctifying you wholly and your whole spirit and soul and body being preserved unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who shall also do it. Amen. You see, Jesus came to save man, not just souls. He came to save the spirit from sin, the body from sickness, and the spirit from death. The spirit from death, the soul from sin, and the body from sickness. He came to give your spirit eternal life. He came to give your soul peace and freedom from sin. And he came to give your body healing. Wow. That's interesting. Now you've told us about the three gifts, talking about love, joy, and peace. 
What do you have to say about the six others? Well, the first six are for us to live. They are all forming our character. God's love, joy, and peace will make us calm and quiet. We won't be pressured. And this causes patience. When we are filled with love, we will be able to love others more. We'll be able to be more kind to them and treat them like we ourselves would like to be treated. Mm. And joy helps us to find joy in helping others. And Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Interesting. That was wonderful. And so what about the other fruits? Yeah. Matthew 7, 16 to 27. 16 to verse 20, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth through evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. So love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness and goodness are revealed in our personal lives. And faithfulness, meekness and temperance comes out of our lives in our attitudes towards others. We've got to be faithful to God yeah. as well as to one another. Yeah. Meekness, gentleness of God, gentle with others. Temperance, turning away from sin to righteousness and practicing righteousness, which causes self-control and yielding to God to change us more and more. And Colossians 1.10 says that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Wow. The other question I'm going to ask is, you know, walking in the fruit of the Spirit does it in any way affect how we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> if you are walking in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you are learning to walk how Christ walked. Christ walked with all of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When we are walking in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we are in a position to hear God a lot, lot easier and we are able then to receive the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit will work far more powerfully through our Holy Spirit, through our lives, the lives of those who know how to live in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So it's hand in hand. Yes. The fruits of the Holy Spirit forms our character and enables us to grow into the character of Christ, whereas the Holy Spirit is a gift from Christ with nine gifts in order to help us walk his life in his power. Wonderful. I really thank God for your life because as a woman of God has been ministering for years, I've seen you move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I've seen the hand of God mighty in your life. We have a video to show you right now. 
And that video shows someone somewhere in Africa that was healed by the power of God through this wonderful man of God, Pastor Susan Pillens. Here it is. So you've been paralyzed for one year. Yes. But you get to walk. I know you're going to walk in, in a few minutes. Yeah. Lord, we just come on. Strength, come back into these knees right now in Jesus' name. And then to the feet in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Yes. And walk in Jesus' name. As you walk, your healing will come more. As you walk, your healing will come more and more. You are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 How are you feeling? Can you go up and down steps yet? How are you feeling? Are there tears of joy? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanted to make sure you're 100%. Do you want to try and go up and down the steps? Mommy, you are here. Yes. All right. You are here. Come up again. Paralyzed for. Come up. Why you? That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that from this moment she goes from strength to strength, and that arthritis will never come near her again in Jesus' name. Amen. But she will remain healed for the rest of her life. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, welcome back. I hope you were blessed by that testimony there. Uh, well, you were there for it yes, to happen. Yes, I was in Kenya quite a few years ago. So what happened, you know? You know. Well, uh, she was paralyzed for two years, was not able to move. Her knees were fused solid. Uh, you, you would have seen her legs could not touch the ground. They were fused totally solid from very bad arthritis. But you saw the Lord heal her. Of course, it was speeded up a little bit. It actually took a bit longer. And, um, well, after she was healed, the next day, she came running to greet me. Amen. I wished I'd filmed her. I didn't have a camera with me at the time. Wonderful. But she is so happy. We thank God for your life because uh, studying your ministry over the years, We've seen your ministry in terms of teaching people, raising up evangelists and disciples. At the same time, you ran a bicycle ministry for a while. Then you talked about actually allocating uh, orphans into homes to the point where a whole town or village had no orphans left. Can you just, let's just start with the bicycle ministry. I was really blessed by that when you shared that years ago. Can you just, uh, for the benefit of the viewers who are seeing you for the first time, just tell us a bit about that. Yes, well, it just, it, it grew very fast. Uh, faster than the ministry could possibly keep up with. And it was really, really upsetting when I had to go to India to give bicycles. This was after I had given the 500 bicycles and then it grew to 3,000. And we could not raise that type of money. Wow. And the pastor never told them that they weren't getting bicycles anymore. I said, Lord, what am I going to tell them? And I went into a dream. And in the dream, I was in heaven. And angels were bringing in these beautiful crowns on tattered pillows and there were thousands of evangelists left and right and they began to give out the crowns to all the pastors and I noticed that some of the older pastors uh, that had worked for a shorter time, the poorer ones, were getting their bigger crowns and some of the bigger men of God were getting the smaller crowns. Wow. Yeah, and that, they gave me one too, I didn't even look at mine. I was so busy looking at everybody else and then 
uh, they all looked to me and I thought, oh, what do we do now? Oh, yes, we've got to go up the aisle to the throne of God. And I have to lead the way. And these thousands of evangelists are behind me, all with their crowns. And we walk up this golden aisle. Millions and millions of people misted into the distance. We come up to the uh, big throne of God, which seemed to be about 18 inches high, solid gold, solid gold floor, and they filed either side of me all holding their crowns. You couldn't see anything above the gold. It was too bright. They all look at me, and we all begin to lower the crowns at the foot of the throne, at the foot of Jesus. And as we're lowering our crowns, this voice booms out of heaven. Hmm. These crowns represent your lives given for me. And I woke up. Wow. Next morning, I'm at the crusade. All these thousands of uh, evangelists in front of me. And I've got to explain why they're not getting bicycles. And I tell them the dream. Well, I get the most amazing response. They all stand up in one accord and shout, Jesus is worth walking for. Jesus is worth walking for. Jesus is worth walking for. And they began to praise God in ecstatic yeah. praise. You see, these crowns were not shiny gold. I explained that to them. They were all finely stitched. Every crown was finely stitched, finely stitched crowns. And suddenly these evangelists were bright enough to say, yes, every mile we walk for Jesus is another stitch of gold in our crowns one day. Amen. I thought, oh, wow, these are great men of God. Well, a year later, these pastors trusted God for their own bicycles. And I go back a year later, and they proudly show me the bicycles God had given them through their own faith, through their own prayer. Some of them even had motorbikes and one or two, even a car. Wow. And so I've been teaching all our pastors this, all our evangelists. I said, yes, we did start the ministry by giving bicycles, but now we've taught you a new level is to trust God with your own faith for your bicycle. Amen. And you know, God has provided for them. Amen. But for the benefit of the viewers, can you just share with us the reason you started with the bicycle ministries? Because a lot of them heard you talking about bicycle, but they don't know why. Well, God told me initially to uh, train up these rural evangelists with a simple Bible school discipleship program of evangelism. The thing is, it was too far to walk, so they needed bicycles. So I came home and I ran some horse shows and I sent some bicycles for them for the first 22 part pastors. You, you had a package. You had a bicycle, a torch, a, a megaphone, Bible, a, megaphone. a bicycle a megaphone and Bible. And we are still giving out these, this package to a few people. Often it is the teachers uh, or somebody in desperate need. So we are still giving out a few packages uh, of a bicycle, megaphone and Bible. God bless you. In two minutes, I want to also explain to us the strategy you applied to make a whole town or village of no orphans, you know, with no one to look after them anymore. Not in the towns, only the villages. The villages, okay. Um, I landed up having to start an orphanage. So we start building dormitories. Lord said, no, no, no. My idea was never to put children into compounds. I created my children to grow up in family units. He said, foster my orphans into Christian families. 
I've never done that before, but I tried it. I thought we'd try it for six months. So we tried it with the Kenyan orphanage for six months. It worked so well that we've done it that way ever since. And the thing is, is every Christian has to take home one orphan. And you know, the African people are generous people and they don't mind taking on one orphan if they are asked to. And uh, initially we used the uh, schools then, we turned them into schools for the Wonderful. orphans and churches on the Sundays, so they are being well used. Hallelujah. That's very, very creative. <laughs> God, God knows how to do things his way. Amen. Let's just quickly go through these books. Uh, you, you got, you've written several books here, and this one says, uh, Dare to Walk in Power, Authority, and Love. Another one says, Dare to Search for Truth. Yes, for unbelievers to search for truth. Wonderful. There to step out in faith. Becoming disciples in Jesus. Hallelujah. Another one here, forwarded by Pastor David Hathaway, there to enter his presence. Step by step into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Another one, by, forwarded by Pastor David Hathaway, there to do only the Father's will. No, no, dare to break through the impossible with Christ. Yeah. Praise uh, God. These you can get on our website, suzannesministries.co.uk. That's S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-S, -N -N -E ministries.co.uk. Website, suzannesministries at gmail.com. Phone number 0044-1865-3099. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, madam. I really want to thank you so much for being on this program today. And I know we have a lot more to do for the kingdom of God. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. On that note, I really want to thank you for being with us today. I want to encourage you to go on to Pastor Susan's website and get yourself some copies of the book. Give them away, of the books. Give them away as Christmas gifts or whatsoever, any gift to anybody at any given time and God will surely bless you. And if you're in ministry, put into practice a lot of what she has shared with us today in terms of reaching out to evangelists to spread the word of God across the whole world. God bless you as you continue to walk in obedience. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back your way very, very soon.